Welcome to another Michigan football show. I'm Bryn Mickle. And I'm Aaron McMahon. Another year, another loss to Ohio State. This really seemed like a microcosm of the entire season. High expectations, a fast start, and then everything falls apart. What happened? Yeah, I think for the second time this year, Michigan State being the first one, I think you can pin the blame on the quarterback. John O'Corn struggled, overthrew receivers, fumbled a couple of snaps. O'Corn throws that interception there in the fourth quarter, which, which was ugly. There was no receivers you know, anywhere near it. Um, that was kind of the final nail in the coffin for Michigan. Well, and as a Michigan fan, one of the frustrating things is the Ohio State starter goes out with injury, the backup comes in, and you're thinking, mm, maybe we got a chance here. And he comes in and lights up the Michigan defense. Is the talent gap that big between these two teams? I don't think it's much of a talent gap as is maybe youth and experience. I thought Michigan came out with a good game plan early on. They go up 14 nothing. They were relatively creative in some of the play calls they had. They got guys open that we hadn't seen you know, do much all season long. Um, but back to the quarterback thing you just mentioned, Chase Winovich was asked after the game about, about Dwayne Haskins, and he made it sound like Michigan wasn't well prepared to, to face him, like they hadn't scouted him much or maybe hadn't watched much tape. Um, and I think you saw that in his play. He basically duplicated what JT Barrett was able to do. When things opened up, he scrambled, found some yards, he rushed for a touchdown, he made plays, and that's what kept the Ohio State offense going. And speaking of quarterbacks, the Michigan QB roller coaster took another loop this week when it was announced that Wilton Spate was transferring. What's that mean for the program going forward? Well, I think it opens the door for Brandon Peters. Uh, the question I've gotten time and time again the last few weeks is who's gonna be the starter next season? I, I think for the first time under Jim Harbaugh, Michigan can go into a, a spring practice, a fall camp, and say they've got their guy at quarterback. Brandon Peters will have the experience edge over Dylan McCaffrey. I think he's shown that he could be a starting quarterback. Does this mean that for the first time under the Harbaugh era, we won't see a graduate transfer come in to uh, play quarterback? <laughs> As of right now, no. I mean, there, granted, there, there, there are rumors out there right now about other people. Um, there's always the opportunity to bring someone in. As of right now, going into spring, it's going to be Peters 1, McCaffrey 2, and then you've got some other options. You got, you've still got Alex Malzone sitting on the bench. You've got Michael Sessa. You've got a couple of true freshmen that plan on enrolling early. They'll be young, but I think Peters has earned the opportunity to go into spring as, as a number one. So before we can put a capper on this season, one more game, the bowl. Who are we going to see under center for that? I think there's no question it's going to be Peters. Unless he's injured, you know, unless he can't clear concussion protocol, obviously John O'Corn's still available and he's got the experience and everything else. But I think there's no question about it. Peters has to be your starter. How important is the bowl game for this team? Well, for a team so young and inexperienced, I think it's, it's imperative to get these extra practices in. Um, it's going to help with development. It's going to help with Brandon Peters especially. It's going to help with the wide receivers. Maybe help solidify that offensive line a little bit more. So this is an opportunity for them, I think, to get off to the right foot heading into the offseason. Any idea what destination uh, we'll have? Well, two spots keep coming up. Uh, the Holiday Bowl in San Diego, uh, the Outback Bowl in Tampa. Michigan's played in Florida three of their last four bowl games. Haven't been to California in a while. So this weekend is going to be key. Michigan thinks it knows where it's going. It's going to end up in the hands of the college football playoff committee. Well, Aaron, the season has been frustrating to say the least. But we still have the bowl. Hope springs eternal. I think it's important to remember, too, that you know expectations for this team weren't that high this season. You know, Most people had them winning nine, maybe ten games. They've still got an opportunity to get to nine games with, with the bowl win. Well, we still want a national championship. But until then, join us in two weeks when we'll preview the bowl game and enjoy your holiday season.